Are you looking for an athletic scholarship? You're in the right place. This is the Recruit Me Athletic Scholarship Podcast, the longest running podcast on recruiting and athletic scholarships. We're here to help your family navigate the recruiting road all the way to an athletic scholarship. He's a recruiting expert and a dad of a D1 athlete and a newly committed high school athlete that just received an athletic scholarship. He's got a wealth of experience to share. Here's Recruit Me CEO, Brent Hanks. Welcome to the Athletic Scholarship Podcast. This is episode 280 of the longest running recruiting education podcast. This episode is called Myth Number Two about athletic scholarships. I'll get into this myth. But first, I would like to invite you to go back and listen to last week's episode, episode 279, which was myth number one about athletic scholarships. Myth number one was, if my child is good enough, the college coaches will find him or her. Go to recruit-me.com and click on the Recruit Me Podcast tab, or find the Athletic Scholarship Podcast on your favorite podcast app to get a notification every Tuesday for the newest episode and for past episodes. This episode brings you myth number two of athletic scholarships. There are 10 myths that are featured in the step-by-step to an athletic scholarship manual that you can get in the Recruit Me 3.0 athletic scholarship system. I'll give you more information on the Recruit Me 3.0 system at the end of this episode. Myth number two is, if I'm talented, the coaches can get me into school despite poor grades. The manual says, truth, that it is just the opposite. Poor grades shut off a coach's interest more quickly than anything else. Even before a coaches evaluate your athletic ability, they can take a look at your GPA and your SAT or ACT scores and make a decision about moving forward at that point. John Fugler, the founder of Recruit Me and former owner, stated that he remembered that he was in the stands watching his sons compete in a showcase. He was watching over the coach's shoulder as the coach went through the player profiles in the showcase roster program. And he crossed off athlete after athlete. What he learned later is that the coach was making his first evaluation based on GPA and test scores, even before watching any of the athletes compete. Schools have a minimum academic requirement, and coaches usually cannot get around those minimums. It is true that they can submit a list of prospective students who are borderline to the admissions office but you need to be very close to qualify. All things being equal, a coach would rather pursue a student athlete with comparable abilities, but with higher grades and test scores. It's a better investment of their time. It is also less risky because he or she does not want to recruit athletes that may drop out in a year or two. Here is some advice about academics from Parker Hanks, a current Division I baseball player and student at Northwestern. Parker, do you have any other uh, college advice that uh, we can pass along to the high schoolers that are listening? One, it all starts with academics. If you're not eligible, you're you're not going to play, obviously. But also, once you become back eligible, there's the stigma that you know, you're not a good student, and that might translate over to the field or whatever you play. Is like my coach always says it best. He's like, if you don't have your house in order. How are you going to, how are we going to be able to trust you on the field? So that's, that's number one is just having your stuff together, both academically and within your personal life. Let's talk about the main points of the truths found in this section of the Recruit Me 3.0 manual. A recruit needs to know about college academic requirements for each level of play and that each school can have their own requirements. The recruit must understand how important their GPA class schedule, and test scores are in getting not only a scholarship, but even getting an opportunity to play at the school they want to attend. These items should show a high school student athlete that getting started on the recruiting process begins day one of your freshman year in high school. Planning your core courses schedule with your high school counselor can save you a big headache down the road. Your GPA and test scores will make you more attractive or less attractive depending on your grades and understanding that academic scholarships relate to more money to athletes in the long run than actual athletic scholarships. According to the initial eligibility brochure on NCA.org, the academic requirements to play sports in NCA Division I and Division II schools are that you must graduate from high school, complete 16 NCA-approved core courses, earn a minimum GPA, and earn an ACT or SAT score that matches your core course's GPA. 
It is important to meet with your high school counselor yearly. NCAA Division I and Division II requires you to complete 16 NCAA core courses in high school. NCAA Division I is four years of English, three years of math, which are Algebra I or higher, two years of natural or physical science, one year of additional classes like English, math, or natural or physical science, two years of social science, and four years of additional courses, which are any I just listed or foreign language or comparative religion or philosophy classes. NCA Division II is a different mix of the 16 NCA core courses required. NCA Division II has three years of English, two years of math, two years of natural or physical science, three years of additional English, math, or science, two years of social science, and four years of those additional courses. With that big long list, that is the reason you need to get your high school counselor involved and involved early. The high school GPA is another eligibility factor. The NCA Eligibility Center calculates your grade point average based on only the grades you receive in the NCA approved core courses. NCA Division I requires a minimum of a 2.3 GPA and NCA Division II is a minimum of 2.2 GPA to be eligible to start your college classes. The category of test scores says you may take the ACT or SAT an unlimited amount of times. There are some special COVID rules at this time, and you can check on those on this site. on.nca.com backslash COVID-19 underscore fall underscore B. Under normal eligibility NCA rules, the test scores of an ACT or SAT score are plugged into a sliding scale that matches your test score and your GPA. If you have a low GPA, then your ACT or SAT test score needs to be higher. Go to nca.org backslash test dash scores for more information. On the nca.org backslash test dash scores page, there are links for a Division I initial eligibility quick reference sheet and a Division II quick reference sheet and also an international initial eligibility flyer. Now the NCA also has a Division III. The NCA Division III level does not have a general level of incoming freshman requirements. Each school sets their own school's admission requirements. Since the NCA Division III does not give athletic scholarships, they are not bound to have all the schools play by the same rules. According to NAIA.org, the NAIA answers the question of, do I meet freshman eligibility requirements? The initial eligibility for incoming college freshmen is simple. The NAIA does not have any core course requirements and can determine as early as the summer following your junior year that you're eligible. The NAIA Eligibility Center will determine your eligibility based on your high school grades and sometimes your SAT or ACT scores, your class rank, and or dual credits. Register and get more information at playnaia.org. You must graduate from an accredited high school and meet two of the three criteria. You must have a minimum score of 18 on your ACT or 860 on your SAT. And on the SAT, that's only in critical reading and math sections. And have a high school GPA of 2.0 on a 4.0 scale or rank in the top 50% of your graduating class. The junior college academic requirement is simple. Graduate from high school, earning an approved standard academic diploma. There are the academic requirements of the levels of play in sports. Remember, individual schools and or conferences may have higher standards of admission. Some just use these basics and some have higher admission standards. This is part of your early research on schools as you make your list of schools to contact. I mentioned earlier that your GPA and test scores can either give you an edge over other recruits or they cannot distinguish you at all or they can put you at a disadvantage. I have said many times that everyone's recruiting experience is different based on your sport, your position, your physical makeup, your grades, your abilities, and more. But though 100 student athletes will have 100 different paths to college, there is another way to look at it. There are hundreds of athletes out there just like you. Unless you're in that LeBron Suns category or that five-star college quarterback, there's probably going to be another six-foot-tall, 170-pound second baseman out there or another 800-meter runner that runs a 1-minute, 55-second race, or someone that shoots 80 consistently on the golf course. 
There are student athletes just like you with a 3.0 GPA and a 21 ACT or a 900 SAT score. So if you are a good student, can you be better? Can you push yourself a little farther to put yourself in competition with another group of student athletes? Same with your athletics. What are you doing to push to a different level of competition? That is the beauty of sports. You will always have competition at every level to rise to. With the combination of higher athletic performance, higher academic results, and you marketing yourself with your many, many, or even your few impactful attributes, then you can pull away from some of the other recruits that you are competing against. As our family went through the two different recruitments, we found that not all schools give academic scholarships with the same credentials. Not all schools base their admissions and scholarships on GPA on the 4.0 scale. Some use the weighted GPA. Some use ACT or SAT scores. Some schools use only regular test scores, and some use the super scores of the test. Not all schools accept dual credit courses, and some do accept those credits. Some colleges let you test out of basic level courses too. Some colleges have adjusted their standards with COVID, and they may change their standards back if and when school gets back to so-called normal. Some schools that Parker and Sutton looked at did solely one of the measurements, and some did combos. As you get closer to your college choice, your junior and senior years, then you might save both time and money by knowing what your college or colleges you are considering use to grant admission and to give athletic scholarships. Earlier in this podcast, I mentioned the Recruit Me 3.0 athletic scholarship system. I have a holiday special through the Christmas season. The Recruit Me 3.0 system is normally $127, but you can get it now for only $99. Plus, I will send you the recruiting checklist to help keep you on the right road during your journey. Go to recruit-me.com backslash system to get more information and click on the Get Access button to get started today. The Recruit Me 3.0 is a proven step-by-step solution with video tools, audio tools, and digital tools to help guide you through an effective and inexpensive DIY trip to get you an athletic scholarship. The Christmas break from school is a great time to get started or to recommit to your recruiting journey. You can get fast results with simple instructions. Remember, college coaches want to hear from you, the student athlete, not a canned email from an expensive recruiting mail. Go to recruit-me.com backslash system now. Another resource Recruit Me has is the Athletic Scholarship 24-Month Planner and Journal. Last week, I told you about some of the pages included in this 356-page book. You can get more info on the 24-Month Planner and Journal on the recruit-me.com website under the Resources tab. The book has a one-month goal page with another page with a one-month calendar and then pages for a weekly planner. At the top of the one-month goal page, you fill out the month and the year and list your goals, like contact 10 schools, update my player profile, and register on the NCAA and NAI eligibility centers. In the box next to these goals, you can record your results, and at the bottom of the page, you make notes, like what schools you contacted, and a note on maybe some websites that you found and visited. The next page is an actual one-month calendar so you can record and see your goals, your results, showcases, visits, and results. Record coaches' calls and emails or social media attention. This is a great visual. On the daily planner, you fill in the date, your actions to take this week, and put them in order of priority, and then you can mark them off when actions are taken. Items like finishing my player profile and research school A and school B. You can record your recruiting and actual sports successes like I had my best game ever or non-successes like School C is not interested. And you can record something I've learned this week like I should have called that coach from School C sooner. There is more space for journaling and notes. And then at the bottom, a place for things I need to include in next week's plan. There are pages for all 56 weeks of the year. Next week, I will cover Section 2 of the 24-month planner and journal, which has record-keeping tools. You can get your own Athletic Scholarship 24-month planner and journal by contacting me at brent at recruit-me.com or by going to Amazon. This book is $19.99 plus shipping and handling. If everything goes as planned, next week's episode will be an interview with a new, exciting, helpful, and inexpensive tool to enhance your recruiting experience. Go to qrrecruiter.com or follow on Twitter 
at QR Recruiter to get a preview of this product. And if you are interested in this exciting and fun tool, make sure to let them know that Recruit Me sent you. Thank you for listening and have a great Christmas. And I'll see you next week on the Athletic Scholarship Podcast.